one more video. I have to do these all in a row because, I mean, I'm at a conference and I'm hearing a lot and I'm getting inspired and it's a bit more volume than I'm used to. There's a lot of thoughts running through my head. But I'm going to talk about this time I saw Jordi LaForge talk yesterday or the day before. And uh, other than not giving Casper Zach $50,000, which sucks. Sorry, bud. But um, he had a talk. Uh, he was just being interviewed on stage, and they're talking about next generation and previous career plans and roots and racism and things like that. So, I mean, this is kind of a general interview. But then towards the end, they kind of twisted it towards games. And... <clears throat> I mean, of course, LeVar does Reading Rainbow. And he's always been a proponent of education and using the power of media to enrich people's lives. And that's something that I've always wanted to do. Like, that's kind of spoken to me. And I don't know. I thought it was kind of funny because he said, you know, he just basically said that. He said, like, he said, you guys, the developers, you guys have the power to make change. You have one of the most powerful tools at your disposal. Games. What are you going to use it for? And I kind of had to laugh because some of the questions that came up after that, I guess people aren't understanding that phrase because everyone's like raising their hands and being like how do you propose we're gonna make kids read more in games when people just skip through all our tutorial text and I was just like rolling my eyes like that's not what he meant and he did end up clarifying that a few times when people say you can make a game that's educational that can touch people that can help people it doesn't have to be like an educational game like uh, one off the top of my head Guitar Hero you don't have to read a bunch of pages of texts you, you don't have this failure flop of an educational game and there's a game that has enriched people's lives and has taught people like um, hey, I love the game because it, now there's like an extra two dozen people at karaoke bars like no one could sing before. Now they can. It teaches people to sing. Um, there's like a dozen more music stores in my town because more and more people are picking up guitar and wanting to learn the real thing, right? We don't have to make this like really campy, stupid little game <clears throat> uh, just to fit the educational market, right? That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about making a difference in humanity. And even if that's just providing quality entertainment and social interaction with somebody else. I mean, it's a bit weaker, but it's still good. I like that. I like that a lot. And I like that, like, LeVar really appreciates that. And I think it's something cool and something to keep in mind. So somebody asked him, he said, uh, they said, I think it's a stupid question, but he said, how do you propose we do this? Like, hey, LeVar, what's your idea? How should I make a game? Like, that's a stupid, unanswerable question. I mean, we all find our own ways to do this. But he answered interestingly. Um, anyway, uh, Lavar said that um, uh, be mindful of how you think. So he said, like, like it doesn't matter what you say or what you do, or what your game is. Be mindful of the thought process in your head while you're making it. Why are you making your game? What are you hoping to get out of your game? And I hope, like me, I hope that a lot of you out there are hoping for and thinking for something other than money and success. I know I definitely am. I get the feeling that uh, most of you on uh, Indie Conversation here might be the same way. 
We want to express ourselves. We want to express an art form. We want to entertain. I'm really interested in community and social interaction. I've yet to make a game that really exercises that, but that's in my mind, right? That's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm driving for. What's in your brain when you're making a game?